but if he lied to her and she jumped inside, she might die for nothing. As she thought about it, a small voice inside her told her to jump. The voice assured her that everything would be all right. Amaka decided to trust the voice, took a deep breath and jumped into the darkness without thinking twice. A while back, in the village of Umwoji, there was a beautiful princess named Amaka. She was the eldest daughter of King Emeka, the respected ruler of Umwoji. Everyone in the village called him King Emeka the Just because he always did what was right. But Princess Amaka had a big problem. Her body had a very strong smell, like ten baskets of onions mixed with rotten fish. So much so that whenever she walked by, flies would swarm around her like she was their mother. Even birds would fly away when she appeared. Because of this terrible smell, the entire village started to avoid her. Nobody wanted to be around her anymore. The princess did everything she could to fix the problem. She bathed ten times every day, used all kinds of perfumes from the big market and tried all sorts of traditional medicines, but nothing worked. The smell still followed her around like it had a personal grudge against her. As it turned out, no man wanted to marry Amaka because of her condition. Her father tried to arrange marriages for her five times, but the men would run away one by one as soon as they saw her. After the last man ran away, because he couldn't stand the smell, Amaka locked herself in her room and cried for days. She didn't understand why she had this kind of sickness that made everyone avoid her. Some villagers even sang mean songs about her, calling her the princess of the smelly kingdom. This really broke Amaka's heart. One sunny morning, as Amaka sat and watched the sun rise gently over the palm trees surrounding the village, she heard sweet music coming from nearby. It was a kind of music that touched her soul deeply, and she couldn't explain it. She decided to go and see where the music was coming from. When she arrived there, she saw a handsome young man around 25 years old playing the flute. His eyes sparkled like fireflies in the night, his skin was smooth like coconut milk, and his teeth were whiter than a chewing stick. The music coming from his flute had a magical quality to it, healing the soul. Amaka knew he wasn't an ordinary man. She approached him and asked, Excuse me, what is your name? The man smiled, his teeth shining like diamonds. He said, My name is Chibuike, and you are the beautiful Princess Amaka of this land. What do I owe this honor? Amaka couldn't believe that someone could call her beautiful with the way she smelled like a smelly goat. She asked him, Don't you smell something bad here? Chibuike chuckled softly and said, my princess, I only perceive the sweet fragrance of your inner beauty. External things don't matter to me. Amaka's heart opened up because she had found someone who truly understood her. From that day on, she and Chibuike became the best of friends. Every day, she would go to meet him where he played his music. Chibuike's sweet music brought her joy and hope that things could get better for her someday. After three months, Chibuike told Amaka that he had fallen in love with her. He said he wanted to marry her despite her condition because that didn't matter. What was important to him was the beauty inside her heart. Amaka told him that she needed to think about it first because it was a big decision to make. Chibuike agreed and told her to take her time. That night, Amaka couldn't sleep. Her mind was troubled a lot. She loved Chibuike deeply and his music gave her life, but she felt ashamed that someone might marry a princess who smelled like twenty rotten cassavas. She didn't want Chibuike to suffer or be laughed at because of her. After a lot of thinking, she decided to tell Chibuike that they should remain friends instead because it was what was best for everyone. The next day, when she got to their usual meeting spot, she didn't see Chibuike. He had travelled to the next village to play his music for their king's ceremony. She waited for three days for him to return. During those three days of waiting, she thought and cried a lot. She realised that finding someone who truly loves you is not easy in this life. And she already had that with Chibuike. Not only did he like her, but his music also deeply touched her heart. She decided to accept his proposal because true love is hard to find. On the third day, Chibuike returned. Before Amaka could tell him that she had changed her mind, he called her to a quiet corner where nobody was around. He knelt down with a black velvet box in his hand. Inside was a gold ring with a diamond that sparkled like stars. With tears in his eyes, Chibuike told Amaka, My sweet princess, you are the best thing that has ever happened to me in this life. I have thought about it deeply and I can't live without you. 
These three days of traveling felt like hell for me. I missed you so much. Please accept to be my wife. I will love you until the end of time. As Amaka opened her mouth to give her answer, Chibuike continued talking, saying, I know you have concerns about your condition, about what people will say. My princess, don't worry, I will make sure... Amaka interrupted him. She said, Chibuike, I don't need to hear anything else. You have shown me true love just as I am. You accept me for who I am, so I am ready to be your wife. Chibuike's face lit up like the sun. He lifted Amaka up and spun her in the air. Both of them were very happy. Soon after, they had the biggest wedding in the entire village. All of Amaka's friends and family were there, although some of them still smelled the princess and nearly fainted. But nobody could deny that the couple was very happy. However, two years into their marriage, the smell still worried Amaka, even though Chibuike told her it didn't bother him at all. One night, Amaka woke up from a dream crying. In the dream, she saw herself old and still living with the same condition, still driving people away with her smell. That night, she cried to Chibuike, saying she wanted to find a solution to her problem once and for all. Chibuike hugged her and said, No problem, my love. Whatever you want, I'll stand by you. Early the next morning, Amaka set out on a journey to the heart of the evil forest where many healers and herbalists lived. She wanted them to help her end her suffering once and for all. The long journey almost killed her. Wild animals chased her. She fell into a river. Steep mountains almost finished her. But she was determined to find a solution. After some days, she finally met a powerful healer who told her that the cause of her condition was spiritual. He said it was a curse her great-grandfather placed on their family long ago. But there was a solution. She would need to visit the Pit of Truth to discover the real beauty within her. The healer described where the Pit of Truth was located. It was a bottomless pit that showed a person their true reflection of their soul. No lies could exist near it, but nobody who had entered the pit had ever come out again. So Mucker didn't waste any time. She set out immediately in search of the pit of truth because she was tired of living with the curse of the smell. After two days, she finally reached where the pit was. It was a dark pit in the heart of the evil forest that nobody could reach unless they had a strong mind. She looked down into the darkness. She wondered whether to jump inside or not. If what the healer said was true, she would finally know how to cure her problem. But if he lied to her and she jumped inside, she might die for nothing. As she thought about it, a small voice inside her told her to jump. The voice assured her that everything would be all right. Amaka decided to trust the voice. She climbed on top of a large rock next to the pit so she could jump properly. She knelt down to pray to God to protect her. Uh, after the prayer, she stood up, took a deep breath and jumped into the darkness without thinking twice. As she kept falling endlessly, she began to see scenes from her life playing before her eyes like a movie. First, she saw her childhood, how she was a happy, normal child without any smell. Then she saw when the smell started, when she turned 16 years old. She saw how it affected her life, how nobody wanted to marry her, how villagers mocked her. She relived all the pain and trauma. Next, she began to see some events that she didn't remember before. She saw how her great grandfather had a dispute with his brother over land. She saw how he got angry and went to a native doctor to put a curse on his brother's descendants. Lastly, she began to see images of all the good things that had happened to her since the smell started. She saw how it made her wiser beyond her years. She saw how it made her realize that nobody is perfect in this life. She saw how it made her humble and friendly instead of proud like some princesses who act like they know everything. She saw how it led her to meet and marry Chibuike, who was the best man in the whole world. As all these scenes finished playing, she heard the voice inside her speak again. It said, Amaka, my daughter, now you have seen the full truth about your life. I, your guiding spirit, brought you here to learn this lesson because you deserve to be free from this suffering. Look at your life carefully. Despite the smell, it has brought you sweetness in its own way. Before Amaka could reply to the voice, she saw herself flying up out of the pit, back to the top, where she had jumped from. Within seconds, she found herself climbing out of the pit, feeling shocked. She looked at her skin, and nothing had changed, but when she tried to smell her armpit, she realized that the smell had completely disappeared as if it had never existed before. She smiled and shouted, Thank you, God. 
as she danced on the rock from which she had jumped. Her long nightmare had finally ended. She continued dancing all the way back to the village of Umuji. When she reached home, Chibuike was shocked. He asked what had happened because her face was shining brightly. Amaka explained everything to him. Chibuike hugged her tightly, filled with joy. He told all their servants to bring ten crates of beer to celebrate. From that day on, Amaka became a better person than before. She started helping poor people. She began a charity foundation and she opened a school to train young girls to become better women. Everybody in the kingdom respected and loved her deeply. Years later, she became the most popular and kind queen that Umuoji had ever known. And her story inspired millions of girls even after her death. So, my brothers and sisters, the moral of this story is, no condition is too bad to ever change. Nobody is perfect in this life. If you believe in yourself, you can achieve anything. Never let anyone tell you that you're not valuable. And beauty is found on the inside, not on the outside. Just because someone is attractive doesn't mean they're better than someone who isn't. Thank you for listening to my story. Until next time, take care.